fall. We'll have an updated look at radar, see what's left over out there, and especially talk about how much rain fell and where. And of course, go over the changes for the weekend. I'll see you in a bit. Teens and vaccines. Now that we have a strong supply, what could we see happen if the eligible age for COVID-19 vaccination drops lower? As the CDC considers whether to resume giving the Johnson & Johnson one-shot COVID-19 vaccine, the latest on the increasing number of people developing blood clots after getting that shot. Having outrage in North Carolina after a sheriff's deputy shoots and kills a black man while serving a warrant. The calls for transparency and what witnesses are saying next. In the wake of a deadly Tesla crash, Consumer Reports says it can easily trick the car into driving even when there's no one in the driver's seat. We'll show you coming up. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, Sky 12, high above downtown, where we have seen some sunshine in the last few hours after starting the day off with fog and then some pretty decent showers. Yeah, it was a good drink of water for some people around town, Adam. So are we wondering now, is this going to stick around for a while? Well, the sun came out, and that's going to be the trend here as we go into the weekend. But we still have some shower activity to talk about. First of all, you go east of San Antonio, especially parts of Lavaca County, uh, just in and around Gonzales as well. Few light showers left over. You head farther to the west, and that's where we actually have a severe thunderstorm. That's basically from Maverick County moving into Zavala County. It could have some hail up to about an inch in diameter, and it looks like that'll pass just north of Crystal City. But we're gonna keep an, a, an eye on situ the situation, especially west of town, as we could have more development as we go through the evening hours. But locally, it looks like it's all said and done. You look at the rainfall totals here, this is nice to see, and I know not all of you watching got in on the rain, but some of us had some good accumulations. Randolph Air Force Base over an inch at the airport in town, San Antonio International, 0.73, so about three quarters of an inch. You get between Seguin and San Marcos on Highway 123, two and a half inches. Even Adkins about an inch, downtown San Antonio half an inch. We like to see these accumulations. Bull Verde and Stone Oak just under half an inch. You look at our weather watchers, Divine, a hundredth of an inch, Seguin about seven tenths of an inch. So we did have some nice accumulations, but you see where these temperatures are warmer out west. We have the dry line moving in as well. That could kickstart a few more thunderstorms into the evening. Check out our weather watcher, Universal City, Joe's Backyard, 0.7 in New Braunfels, 1.41. This is what we needed. I know we could use it elsewhere as well. We'll take a look at the seven day forecast and if we have any shot at more showers in the days ahead. And of course, some noticeable changes into the weekend we're going to talk about coming up, Myra. All right, we'll see you in a bit, Adam. Thanks. Now to a new development on the blood clot concerns surrounding the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The Texas Department of State Health Services today saying a Texas woman is in the hospital after she received the J&J &J vaccine and experienced symptoms that appear to be consistent with several other cases reported in other parts of the country last week. However, no confirmation just yet that the vaccine caused those symptoms. DSHS says it was notified by the CDC on Wednesday, though they did not go into detail about where exactly that woman lives here in Texas. And this just in this afternoon, a federal advisory panel is urging the CDC to restart vaccinations with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine with a new warning label. The recommendation follows a 10-day pause and comes even as the number of people who developed blood clots after getting the vaccine has more than doubled. ABC's Alex Perche with that story. As a CDC advisory panel considers whether to resume the one-shot Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine, the CDC director is saying this. But the CDC is also updating its data, which finds that there have been 15 cases of patients developing blood clots out of the nearly 8 million Johnson & Johnson vaccine doses being delivered. Initially, the agency had found six cases of women who had developed blood clots. One of them had died. It's unknown if the Johnson & Johnson vaccine contributed to the clots, Health officials say the 15 cases are all women, mostly in their 30s. They also say outcomes could be improved if people are aware and seek help right away. That's been the case for 18-year-old Emma Berkey. She's one of those 15 women who struggled with blood clots after getting the vaccine. She's improving. Her condition is improving. Uh, day by day. She had several seizures and needed three brain surgeries. Her family still advocating people get vaccinated. But overall, fewer Americans are. And scientists have put together this map. The areas in dark blue show where Americans are resisting the vaccine the most. 
The country's seven-day average of daily cases is now about 62,500, roughly 10 percent lower than last week. But at least seven states have seen an increase in new cases over 10 percent. Alex Brashe, ABC News, Washington. In Texas, anyone over 16 can get vaccinated now, though if you're under 18, Pfizer is your only option. The drug manufacturer wants to go even lower, though, asking the FDA earlier this month for approval to use the vaccine for 12 to 15 year olds as well. That would cover a decent portion of students. Garrett Berger tells us what we could expect if that happens. Coming out of University Health's Wonderland of the Americas vaccination site, teenage minors were eager to take advantage of their new protection against COVID-19. I can finally you know, go out and do things and not feel um, worried about getting uh, the virus. It just represents like everything going back to normal. The state says it's working with vaccine providers to anticipate the pivot for when the vaccine is possibly approved for younger ages. Provider education is important, making sure that they have all the uh, storage and handling requirements because some of these may be different types of providers than, than are already enrolled with us. Um, so we're actively moving in that direction already. University Health, which is the largest vaccine provider in the county, says it's been in communication with school districts and other organizations, but it is not planning right now to offer any vaccinations on campus. We're still just using the Pfizer and that requires the ultra cold refrigeration. So it's much easier to do it in one place rather than take it on the road. So should the Pfizer vaccine become available for younger teens, there will almost certainly be parents ready to bring them in and get more of their families vaccinated. Oh yeah, we want a vacation this summer. <laughs> oh yeah. We want to be vaccinated. We want to just get back to life. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. With more vaccines available here in the U.S., more people are taking advantage of getting vaccinated, including some who don't even live in the country. In fact, with the overall goal being to get as many people vaccinated as possible, University Health System says it is not in state protocol right now for people to provide proof of residency. That worked in favor of Rene Rivera, who travels back and forth from San Antonio to Mexico. He brought his family in from Mexico today to get their first dose at the Wonderland of the Americas. We were very thankful here at UT Health because um, we came and asked if we can get an, uh, an, an appointment and they said we can do walking so come on so the three of them they are inside uh, and they got the vaccine very fast we were uh, we feel more secure you know we have a, a, a peace of mind rivera says if it were not for being able to get the vaccine here in the u.s he believes his family would have to wait until next year because of their ages Meanwhile, you can also get the vaccine without scheduling an appointment, either through University Health, which has sites at the Wonderland of the Americas and St. Philip's College, or you can get one at the Alamo Dome through Metro Health. You can find all the information about how to do that at KSAT.com. Let's take a look now at the daily COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. Metro Health reporting 68 new infections, no new deaths for a second day in a row. 253 COVID positive patients are in the hospital, 84 in the ICU, 44 are on ventilators. 731,036 people have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, while 477,126 people are fully vaccinated. Outrage growing now in North Carolina, where police there shot and killed a black man while trying to execute a warrant on Wednesday. Protesters now calling on local officials to release body camera footage of the deadly encounter. ABC's Rena Roy has more. The calls for transparency growing louder in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, where police say a deputy shot and killed 42-year-old Andrew Brown Jr. Wednesday. Based on the witnesses that said that he was not armed and he was fleeing, that is unlawful. Protesters demanding body camera footage be released of the deadly incident, which unfolded at Brown's rental home when authorities say officers tried carrying out an arrest warrant for felony drug charges. Our deputies attempted to serve the arrest warrant. They fired the shots. They've been put on administrative leave until we know all the facts. According to a witness, Brown was trying to drive away when officers fired the shots. He was nonviolent. I can, anybody that knew him would tell you that. He didn't even carry a gun. He was driving away. Officials say officers from other agencies were brought in because Brown has resisted arrest in the past. Mr. Brown was a convicted felon with a history of resisting arrest. Our training and our policies indicate 
under such circumstances, there is a high risk of danger. An investigation now underway into the officer's actions. If evidence shows that any of my deputies violated the law or policies, they will be held accountable. People are hurt, man. Um, regardless to what went on, people are hurt. The officers involved have been put on administrative leave. Meantime, police say the body camera footage is in the hands of the State Bureau of Investigation. Generally, in the state of North Carolina, a judge has to approve footage being released. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. New details now in an investigation into former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, who's been convicted of murdering George Floyd. The Department of Justice is looking into a 2017 domestic dispute call between a mother and her son. The incident allegedly caught on body camera footage is said to have involved Chauvin hitting the teen in the head to the point that he needed stitches after the teen refused to get on the ground. Chauvin is also accused of grabbing the teen's throat, causing him to lose consciousness and holding him to the ground with his knee for about 17 minutes. The video did not come up during the trial, but it could come up during sentencing. At sentencing, you have a, a much bigger opportunity, a broader opportunity to present evidence about who the person is. Chauvin is expected to be sentenced June 16th in Hennepin County. To consumer news now, check your fridge. A cheese company voluntarily recalling some of its products. Jules Food says its cashew brie cheeses, artichoke spinach dip, and vegan ranch dressing could be contaminated with salmonella. The recall includes all expiration dates. So far, five people have gotten sick in three states. No deaths have been reported. If you have any of these items, you're asked to throw them out. As last weekend's deadly crash of a Tesla is being investigated, some interesting findings from consumer reports. They say they were able to easily trick a Tesla into driving into autopilot mode even when no one was behind the wheel. In today's Consumer News, Marilyn Moore shows us that video as well as some recalls of baby products. When this Tesla crashed into a tree near Houston, two passengers died. Police say it appears there was no driver. So Consumer Reports went to its test track to see if Tesla's autopilot technology could be activated with no one in the driver's seat. Engineer Jake Fisher was able to engage the autopilot feature of this Tesla Model Y and then move into the passenger seat. As you can see, the car continued to drive. In our evaluation, the system not only failed to make sure that the driver was paying attention, but it also couldn't even tell if the driver was there at all. Safety advocates say driver monitoring systems must discourage risky behavior and keep the driver actively engaged and monitored at all times. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has indicated that the autopilot feature wasn't even enabled during the crash, which is under investigation. Now another family safety news recalls of baby products. Parent alert, take this teether away from infants. Batat is recalling 61,000 Firefly Frank teether sold at Target. The wings are a choking danger. Take it back and get a refund. And 18,000 Playgo activity rattles sold at Walmart are recalled. The ring can detach from the horse and babies can choke on the beads. Contact the company for a free replacement. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Today would have been the Fiesta Battle of Flowers Parade and tomorrow Fiesta Flambeau. We're not celebrating like we usually do, but the show must go on. Up next, how the two organizations are teaming up for a contest and how you can participate for a chance to win. San Antonio Water System is teaming up with the food bank this weekend to help gather donations for families in need. They're holding a drive through food collection event from 9 a.m. to noon tomorrow. It will be at SAW's headquarters in the customer service location parking lot. They need canned foods and non-perishables like peanut butter, cereal, beans, and rice. Dr. Fauci. Give us vaccines. Help all. Check this out. A New York teenager thanking Dr. Anthony Fauci for all his work on the COVID-19 front with his very own song. Zachary Mogavero, who is autistic, used his creativity to rework the lyrics to, you guessed it, Mr. Sandman by the Cordettes. He also created artwork to go along with his message, and that was turned into stickers, which are on display at the Vaccination Center in Henrietta, New York. 
It's tough to top that, but we will try. <laughs> it has been two years since San Antonio has celebrated Fiesta, and with no Battle of Flowers or Fiesta Flambeau parades for the second year in a row, this year, the two associations that put on those parades are trying something new and teaming up for a porch parade contest. The challenge is to decorate your front porch or front yard in all things Fiesta for a chance to win some prizes. The categories are best use of lights, color, memory of street parade, and most puro San Antonio. Total of seven winners will be picked. They'll be announced June 18th during KSAT 12's porch parade special. You can find more information about the contest on ksat.com. And as you mentioned earlier, Myra, this would have been Fiesta Friday for the parade, yeah. the Battle of Flowers. Good thing we didn't have it because of the rain, but the Fiesta weather feel has kind of come back with yeah. all that humidity. The humidity, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it has. And so then I guess Flambeau would have been tomorrow, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Would have been perfect conditions oh, for Flambeau. Don't tell us that. And, well, and, and the windage, too, for the confetti. Though I guess they don't allow the confetti cannons anymore. Really, at the parades. Really? Serious, yeah. Way to go. You got you know, them banned. I heard something about that. I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> let's actually take a. You can debate it all you want, but I'm. I'm Switzerland here, okay? Uh, let's take a look at the radar. We have a little bit of activity over the past hour, far east of town. This is the animation over the past 60 minutes, and Lavaca County has seen a few more leftover showers pop up, but not much to speak of at the moment. You get over into San Antonio, nothing around here. Our sky is clearing. Uh, west, it's a different story. We actually have a severe thunderstorm uh, with a hail core in it mainly. That's the main threat here, passing just north of Crystal City, and that's a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 5. 30 p.m. We'll see if it can maintain its strength, but most recent indications are that it's weakening as it heads eastward toward the I-35 corridor. All right, here's a look at the latest drought monitor. It's updated every week on Thursdays. I shared it with you last night on the night beat. Obviously, we need some rainfall across all parts of our area, but I'm going to put the radar on top of it to show you where we really saw the heaviest rain, and that was in the corridor basically 281 eastward to about 123. That's the corridor where we got the good soaking heavy rainfall on the order of an inch in some spots. And you get north of our area up towards San Marcos and uh, even Austin area. And we're talking two inches in some of those locations. So we got some much needed rainfall and in some spots that needed it. And again, still a little bit of leftover activity. We've got a 20% chance left in the forecast through this evening and into the early nighttime hours. Here's the big picture, though. You look across the state, multiple watches. These red boxes indicate favorable conditions for tornadoes. The yellow boxes indicate favorable conditions for severe thunderstorms. And there's going to be more activity, just not here in our neck of the woods, especially north and east Texas. We'll get the rest of it uh, through this evening and early nighttime. This is the upper level dip in the flow that's out ahead of it. We get that lift helping to create those storms behind it this weekend. We're looking at a lot of sunshine and clear conditions. We're up to 82 right now, a sticky 82 with a dew point of 71. That southeasterly wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico at 11 miles per hour. So our dew points combination of the rain that just fell and the southeasterly wind, it is very sticky outside, though for those of you along the Rio Grande, it's not as bad. Even Rock Springs dew point of 50. The dry line has worked its way in and it's made it to about Uvalde and Carrizo Springs, but we don't anticipate it to make it here this afternoon. Tonight, actually, a wind shift's gonna happen and we're gonna sweep away the humidity for the weekend. We're looking at dew points in the 30s to 50s all weekend, so you're not even gonna notice the humidity again through the weekend until we get into about Monday, Tuesday next week. Temperatures, look at the sunny 96 in Catula, 93 Carrizo Springs. This evening, temperatures falling off. Just down into the 70s, humid, a little bit of patchy fog out there as well. And then tomorrow, 60 in the morning, making it up to near 90 with low humidity and a bit of a breeze out of the north at 10 to 20. Sunday, very similar, low humidity, 58 in the morning, 90 in the afternoon. And next week, we could see a few storms pop up by Tuesday. There are those 90s. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. All right, Greg, the Spurs got the win last night, and they did it at home. Yes, yeah, so they broke their home losing streak. Who would have thought that, well, it's... The new natural, right? The new normal. When we come back, the Spurs hold off the Pistons last night to get a rare home win. And finally, are the Cowboys looking for a quarterback in next week's draft? Coming up. 
All right, San Antonio Spurs have been able to pick up a win at home last night. They held off the determined Detroit Pistons, who have struggled this season, are at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. DeMar DeRozan, a late scratch in the second game of back-to-backs, as was Patty Mills and DeJounte Murray. That meant Lonnie Walker, the fourth, got the start. He made the most of it. He was scored 10 of the Spurs for 16 points, the long three, followed by another one from the left wing. Then Derek White continues to have the hot hand. He gets the floater to fall, and the Spurs are out by nine. Ten seconds left in the first half. Keldon Johnson comes up with a steal. He starts the break. He finds Rudy Gay, who gets the buzzer beater to drop, and the Spurs are up by ten at the break. The Spurs would get their largest lead of the game when Lucas Samanich finds Jakob Pertl. 17 points, 11 rebounds total. And then Lonnie Walker adds another three, and the Spurs lead balloons to 16. But the Pistons hanging in there. And in the fourth quarter, Hamadou Diallo cuts the lead to three with this basket, but the Spurs blow it open as Lonnie Walker hits another three. His fourth of the night, Derek White finishes with 26 points to lead the Spurs and finally Keldon Johnson with the exclamation mark as the Spurs beat the Pistons and sweep the season series 106-91 besides leading the Spurs at 26 White also had eight assists seven rebounds three blocks and a steal DeJounte steals a lot of the rebounds so um, and DeMar was out so I mean there was a lot of plays that I felt like I had to step up and um, pick up their slack so um, I mean I don't really focus on what I should have each and every game, just try to go compete, impact the game. And um, I mean, today it was this. Now, next up, the Pelicans in New Orleans tomorrow night at 7. The Pelicans will come into their home game against the Spurs with a win over Orlando. That Saturday, they beat the Magic last night. Zion Williamson dominated the paint in the paint, scoring 23 points in 23 minutes to help produce their largest victory of the season, 135 to 100. Since New Orleans outscored Orlando 79-43 in the second and third quarters, that meant Zion could rest the entire fourth quarter to get ready for the Spurs. The Pelicans are currently in 11th place in the Western Conference standings, just three games behind Golden State for the play-in tournament, and the Spurs are now in ninth. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Lawford. The Dallas Cowboys may use one of their draft picks next week to add to their quarterback room behind Dak Prescott. And some of the names being mentioned are former Texas Longhorn Sam Ellinger, who's met with the Cowboys, SMU Shane Duchelle. And according to Sports Illustrated, quarterbacks coach Doug Neusmeyer has personally scouted the Aggies in San Antonio's own Kellen Mann. And they're not telling us where in the draft they may choose a quarterback, but they're, they are on their radar, including Kellen. See what happens. Know. That would be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> we'll be right back. Big changes coming over the weekend. A bit breezy tomorrow, north wind 10 to 20, but sunny, low humidity all weekend. Mornings near 60, afternoons right near 90 degrees. So agreeable for any outdoor activities. Then we get into next week. Humidity returns on Monday. And we could have a few thunderstorms by Tuesday, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to have anything too widespread quite yet. All right, lucky for what we saw today. Thanks, Emma. And thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6.